Hello and welcome everyone, Tiberius here, and today I'll be giving my advice for how you can start a career in application security testing in 2024. Whether you're in the cybersecurity industry already or just starting out, these are the things you'll need to do if you want to maximize your success. Instead of just giving a path for you to follow, I'll be explaining why you need to do certain things and give plenty of examples for each including both free and paid resources you can check out. This isn't a guide you necessarily need to follow in a particular order. It's more about building a foundation of knowledge and skills you can use and improve upon throughout what will hopefully be a long and exciting career. As always, if you enjoy the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's jump right in. It's very easy to get overwhelmed by the amount of application security content out there. There are so many great content creators like Rana Khalil, Nahamsek, Insider PhD, and Live Overflow to name just a few. You don't need to watch every video someone puts out, especially if you feel it might be too advanced, or if it covers some area you already know about or aren't interested in. The same goes for blog posts, podcasts, and live streams. What I do recommend is creating some form of rich text document where you can paste links to content you think might be useful later on, or even payloads and techniques for specific vulnerabilities, even the rare edge cases. I've seen people use Obsidian because it uses Markdown, which is super simple to pick up, and the document is made up of simple text files. I personally use Sphinx, which uses a similar language to Markdown. However, I can compile the document into a PDF or even into HTML so it can be opened in a web browser. While some people might have amazing memories, for most of us mere mortals, it's just not possible to remember everything, especially in AppSec. Writing your own notes not only helps retain a general understanding of certain concepts, but it also means you have reference materials on hand so you don't need to search the internet. If you're serious about a career in AppSec, you need to learn the fundamentals, how web applications work, and the underlying technologies that hold them together. This includes protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, and even WebSockets if you want to get advanced. You should also know about client-side technologies, how browsers work, and the basics of languages like HTML and JavaScript. It's also a good idea to learn about cookies, local storage, and concepts like the same origin policy and cross-origin resource sharing or cores. Finally, it's important to learn about server-side technologies such as web servers and databases. The Traversy Media channel on YouTube has a great crash course not only on HTTP, but also both client and server-side technologies. Similarly, Web Dev Simplified has several short 5-10 to 10 minute videos covering the basics. Maybe watching videos isn't how you learn. That's fine too. I've learned a lot about web application technologies from Wikipedia, for example. And if you're feeling particularly daring, you could even crack open an RFC. I get asked all the time if it's important to learn programming if you want to be a web app pen tester or bug bounty hunter. My answer has always been that you can definitely do the job without being proficient in a programming language, but you're ultimately shooting yourself in the foot. Please note there's a big difference between being able to read code and being able to write it. If you've covered the fundamentals already, you should at least be familiar with HTML and JavaScript code. Reading code allows us as testers to understand the functionality of the web application, even if we were struggle to write it from scratch. It will also help you craft client-side payloads like cross-site scripting, since often you'll have to understand the code context you're injecting into. However, I cannot stress enough how being able to code in at least one programming language can benefit your AppSec career. Firstly, there's the automation aspect. Being able to write code to perform repetitive tasks saves so much time, especially since you can often repurpose your code in future engagements. At a deeper level, you can use your programming knowledge to create web applications of your own and use these to enhance and test your understanding of fundamental web applications concepts. You can also purposefully use insecure code, try out new testing techniques, and see how different mitigation strategies affect the result. Remember, you're not trying to become a full stack developer, but during your AppSec career you will be talking to developers, so being able to talk about things from a developer's perspective is so important. As for what programming languages you learn, I would recommend at the very least you become somewhat proficient in Python. Python is a versatile language that does not require a compiler, meaning you can code and execute simple scripts very quickly. It's also usually installed by default on many Linux distributions as well as Mac OS. If you're serious about becoming a web application pen tester, I would also recommend learning Java. 
The reason for this is that the main testing tool most web app pen testers use, Burp Suite, is coded in Java, and modern Burp Suite extensions need to be written in Java as well. There are many places where you can learn how to code for free, however the two most popular places are Code Academy and Free Code Camp so check those out. If you're a TCM Academy subscriber or are planning on getting a subscription, we also have Python for Hackers courses. So far, we've covered the app of AppSec, so we should probably talk about the SEC. You'll need to learn lots of security concepts specific to web applications, such as the different vulnerabilities, including why they occur, how they can be detected, exploited, and ultimately mitigated. Another important thing to learn is various testing techniques, how to properly enumerate an application, which parameters look interesting and have a greater chance of being vulnerable, and ultimately how to use fuzzing and scanning techniques, combined with manual input and analysis to determine if a vulnerability exists. There are so many great resources out there, it's hard to narrow it down to only a few. However, I highly recommend signing up for a free account over at Port Swigger Web Academy, where there are several learning paths and individual topics that cover the most common vulnerabilities. In addition to this, there are over 200 labs with different difficulty levels for you to practice. Again, this is a 100% free resource. OWASP, the Open Worldwide Application Security Project, has a free cheat sheet series and web security testing guide, which covers the full testing process and provides useful tips and techniques for finding vulnerabilities. If you're prepared to spend a little money, then both Hack the Box Academy and Try Hack Me have educational courses and learning paths with live practice web apps to try your skills against. Of course, at TCM Academy, we also have several application security courses, such as Practical API Hacking and Practical Bug Bounty, plus the new Practical Junior Web Tester Certification. There are hundreds, if not thousands of tools available for testing the security of applications. However, one shines brighter than the rest, Burp Suite Pro. The paid version of Burp Suite contains almost everything you need to find and exploit vulnerabilities in web apps and is the main tool of web application penetration testers. The documentation for Burp Suite is well written and has video walkthroughs explaining various features and testing techniques. In fact, the Port Swigger YouTube channel is worth subscribing to as they have started releasing short videos when new features are released. Try Hack Me has a Burp Suite module available which teaches you how to use Burp against live examples with two rooms available for free users and three extra rooms only for subscribers. I know people watching will be thinking, what about Zap or Kaido? And if you've watched my streams before, you know I'm personally not a fan of either. However, I do recognize both are quickly adding features. And in 2024, they may start catching up to Burp Suite in terms of functionality. Zap is 100% free, which makes it a great option to try if you're just starting out whereas Kaido costs $100 a year. Burp Suite Pro, on the other hand, is currently $449, though if you work as a pen tester, you will almost always get the license provided to you by your employer. Other than Burp Suite, you may wish to learn a directory busting tool. Again, there are a fair few available like Ferox Buster, Go Buster, and even FFUF. This will help with the enumeration stage of web application hacking identifying hidden files and functionality which are easy to miss. Several vulnerabilities have inspired highly specialized tools aimed at making their discovery and often their exploitation far easier to achieve. For example, SQL map is pretty much the best tool for finding and extracting information from SQL injections, making this often slow manual process almost entirely automated. It goes without saying that you don't need to be an expert in any of the tools I've mentioned to start your career in AppSec. In fact, you can often learn the basics and then gradually expand your knowledge when you encounter the need for certain features or tools themselves. There are a few AppSec certs out there, including the Practical Junior Web Tester from TCM Academy I mentioned earlier, but eLearn Security also have the EWPT and more advanced EWPTX. Hack the Box Academy have their Certified Bug Bounty Hunter cert, which is aimed at entry-level bug bounty hunters and web app pen testers. Speaking of bug bounty, this is a great way to gain real-world experience and improve your skills. There are several bug bounty platforms available, with the main three being HackerOne, BugCrowd, and Integrity. Most platforms are open to newcomers, and if you follow the stated rules of both the platform and more importantly the bug bounty program, you can try your hand at hacking live sites without legal repercussions. In addition, these platforms are great places to hone your skills at writing reports, which is key if you want to transition to pen testing at some point. I highly recommend reading publicly available bug bounty submissions to see the level of detail which goes into these reports and try to match that level of detail yourself. A really useful site I've been using recently on the recommendation of Insider PhD is Bug Bounty Radar. 
It updates every five minutes with the latest bug bounty programs added to 10 different platforms. Since you only get credit if you find the bug before anyone else, being among the first to start testing on a program gives you a significant advantage. A final avenue of experience worth mentioning is CTFs or Capture the Flags. These are events often hosted by security organizations, including many conferences, where the goal is to solve security related puzzles. Although each CTF is a competition between many teams, you can enter just for the fun either solo or with some friends. Web-based challenges are common and often range in difficulty. In most cases, the challenges aren't 100% realistic, however, they will still feature standard vulnerabilities, usually with some twist you need to figure out. The best site to find upcoming CTFs is CTF Time. If the CTF has an associated forum or Discord server, you may even find teams looking for an extra player. Even if you don't figure out a challenge, the top teams usually post walkthroughs on CTF Time afterwards. These are worth reading to learn tips and tricks for approaching challenges next time. That's all for me today. Hopefully some or all of what I covered was useful and gives you ideas for how to get started in AppSec in 2024. If you feel like I missed a great resource, please mention it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and found it informative, please consider giving it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.